Hey, what's cracking everybody? On today's video, I'm gonna take a look at Zen Lake. Zen Lake OS. Zen Lake OS. And it says right here, Zen Lake OS is a remix of Debian or Ubuntu LTS with GNOME desktop. GNOME is one of the most visually appealing desktop environments on Linux, but its default configuration can be challenging for new users. If you're used to a traditional desktop with a taskbar, start menu, and system tray, GNOME's workflow can be confusing. It lacks the taskbar, system tray, start menu, desktop icons, and even minimize buttons in the window title bars. Zenlake aims to fix this by making GNOME more user-friendly. It provides a familiar Windows-like layout with a taskbar at the bottom of the screen. The goal is to offer a lightweight and minimal GNOME desktop that's ready to use right away without needing to install and configure several extensions. The minimal ISO is less than two gigabytes, allowing you to install only the software you need after the system is set up. Zen Lake also includes built-in system restore function, so you can easily revert your system to a previous state of if something goes wrong. All right, then you got some, uh, some screens right here. You got a features, you got a system restore, uh, Zen Lake settings, so I'll put this uh, link down in the video description. That way you can uh, take a look at it yourself and uh, see if there's something on there that you like. But uh, I got the ISO up in a virtual machine. Let's head on over there and install Zen Lake OS. And it is Zen Lake OS 13. We are here on the virtual machine now and you can see that uh, we have a welcome that opened up automatically and you have some options here. It says try Zen Lake OS, install, and then there's also, there's also a system restore. So what we want to do is install. So we'll click on it and let's see what uh, installer it opens up. And it opens up the uh, Calamari installer. So let's go ahead and run through this real quick and get it installed. So my language selected as American English. Next. My location, right now it's set to New York, but I am actually in Los Angeles. Click next. All right, got my keyboard layout, English default. And right here, what to do with my drive. I'm gonna erase this and swap the file. And I'll leave it on ext4 as I always do. All right, now let's enter some uh, user info. That's my username test. Give it a strong and complicated password. And for the sake of these videos, I always log in automatically and use the same word for uh, the administration account. I would not recommend none of this for new users. Click on next. Here's a uh, preview of everything that's going to happen. Click on install and it's off to the installer. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll uh, pause the video as I usually do here. And when we come back, we'll be booted onto the system so we can take a look at Zen Lake OS 13. Okay, the system installed in about two or three minutes. It was very quick and I have rebooted the system. And you can see the first thing we are greeted with here is the uh, Zen Lake settings and the wallpaper just changed. So I guess it automatically changes wallpapers also. So from right here on the Zen Lake settings, it says a uh, light theme or dark theme. So I'm gonna go with dark theme and it went back to the uh, other wallpaper. All right. And then also on the Zen Lake settings, there's some unbuttons right here, it says gnome. So we click on that, we can reset the GNOME shell, change wallpapers, auto hide taskbar, magic lamp, wobbly windows, desktop cube, cover flow, alt tab, show desktop icons. And it shows you what's activated and what's not. So if you wanna unactivate one, you can do that or you can set it back up. So the choice is yours. All right, and then we have a button right here that says snap. Under snap, you can enable or you can Disable, so the choice is up to you whether you want to use Snap or not. Uh, you can block, block prevent installation of snack packages. Then you also have flat pack. Flat pack is similar to Snap, but they're more reliable, at least in my case, you know. Then you got a drivers tab right here, so you can install NVIDIA drivers, Wine, Microsoft True Type fonts, and Steam client. Then you got a browser. So right now it's set up for Mozilla Firefox, but I guess if you want to use one of these other ones, you can just uh, activate it. And it says pending, pending changes, click apply to execute. So I guess that would uh, actually install it, but we're not going to do that. 
And then right here, there's a button that says software. So you click on this. And I guess these are additional software recommendations that it can install for you. And it says right here, software GTK3. And there's also software GTK4. And then there's a button here for a kernel. So you can keep the current kernel. You can use the Debian LTS, Zen kernel, or the Zen mod, or Shan mod, Xan mod, however you want to pronounce that. Or you can remove kernels. There's a system restore button and more apps. And this is our Zen Lake settings. All right, next we are on the GNOME desktop environment. And this GNOME desktop environment is highly uh, customized. So you can see we have the panel on the bottom and the panel is like a traditional panel. Usually on a GNOME, you'll have a top panel and then a dock on the bottom, but this is like a traditional system, well, a traditional window system. So where you have the panel on the bottom, you got the system tray on the right, where you have your clock, your volume controls, your internet connections, things like that. And then on the left side, we have some pinned applications. So we have the terminal, the genie pad, files, and files again, so it must be two separate uh, file managers, I'm guessing. Firefox, and this button right here, it looks like an application menu button because there's one right next to it, but I'm not sure what it does. Let me click on it and see what it does. It opens the applications menu. I click this one, and it opens the full regular GNOME application menu. All right, so to look at the applications in a more customized way, we'll click on this button, and you can see we have our pinned applications, frequent apps, then you got all applications, and this is listed in alphabetical order. We have our accessories, graphics, internet, office, programs, sound and video, system tools, and utilities. So on the regular uh, show apps, this would be what you usually find on GNOME. And as you can see right here, it's not really all displayed uh, the way a traditional menu does. You can see you only see these that are right here. But if you click under the menus, you got everything organized in a more uh, traditional fashion. All right. So uh, let's take a look at the see what office uh, office tools are offered from Zen Lake. So if we go under office, we don't see anything right here. So if you wanted to install some type of office software, you would have to open up a software manager and install it yourself. All right, now let's see uh, what kind of uh, media tools you have right here. So under sound and video, you have Celluloid, which is a, uh, it's a video player. You can play music with it also, but it's mainly used as a video player. So, you know, this will work for video and music. And that is Celluloid. And let's see, under graphics, we have an image viewer. So if you want to view images, you can open up the image viewer and view images. So if you wanted to use something like GIMP or something like that, you know, you would have to download it yourself and uh, install it. All right. Now let's see. Under internet, we just have Firefox, but uh, you can install other browsers if you need to also. So out of the box, I mean, you, you got your basics. It's just basic as it comes. You got an image viewer, you got a web browser, and you got a, a media player. And now let's take a look at system tools. We have Gparted, Settings, System Monitor, and Tweaks. So usually I'll open up HTOP and so we can see the system monitor, but let's just open up a graphical version so we can see right here. And basically this gives you your information regarding your CPU, your memory, your network, and your disk. And you can see everything's running pretty smooth, so no issues whatsoever. All right. Now let's see uh, what kind of software managers that we have on the system. So I would assume you would have Synaptics, and that would usually be under the system tools, but I didn't see it at all. And let me go back to it and let me check a look at Flatpak. Right now it's set to enable uh, manage snaps and flat packs with GNOME software. So here I can actually install it. So let me install, uh, I guess it's going to be the GNOME software manager or the, yeah, the GNOME software manager. 
usually you'll find this on uh, GNOME systems. I mean, it's the same manager you'll find on Fedora systems. That have anything that has GNOME, you'll find a software manager. All right, so I'll go ahead and, uh, and let me click on apply, see what happens. All right, so close that, open this back up, go into system tools, utilities. Let's see, where is this software manager at? Accessories, or maybe I have to go to all apps. They do have a deb installer, but you would have to download a deb file from the internet. But let's go into, so there it is, software. And this is going to open up the uh, software manager. All right, and right now it's currently refreshing data. So that way you get all your uh, core repositories in order so it can work with the software manager. But uh, we'll see once it opens up. Let's see if we get any errors or not. Because a lot of times when you, uh, these systems that are not uh, set up properly, you'll get errors. But we'll see right now. Let it finish uh, refreshing data and then we'll take a good look at it. All right. So now it's fully opened up now. Let me make this bigger. And let's see. We didn't have any office applications, so we could uh, go up here. I would imagine it would be under work. Let this refresh, see what happens. All right, so far I'm not seeing any Office apps. Well, there are Office apps, but not a traditional Office app. So let me go back. Let's uh, do a search. And right here in the search bar, we'll type Office. All right, it's searching right now. Let's see, we got WPS Office, Office Runner. I don't see LibreOffice. Oh, there it is. All right, so we do have LibreOffice. I guess this is set up in, well, I was going to say alphabetical order, but I can see X Archive and all this. So we always look at uh, LibreOffice, but in this case, let's do WPS Office, just so we can look at something different. And it is going to install from FlatHub. And we'll click on install. All right. So right now it's going through the install process. So uh, while it's doing that, let's uh, take a look at these file managers and see what uh, type of file manager we're using. So this one, I don't know what file manager it is. Let me hover over it. It just says home. Uh, let me go under help, about, and it is Nemo. Okay. I've never seen Nemo set up this way. All right, right on. You learn something new every day, right? All right. So you do have your traditional layout, but the way it's set up right now, let me just put it like this, and there you go. That's a more traditional. So let me put the mouse over here. Yeah, you can set up each window pretty much uh, however you want. So yeah. All right. So I'll leave it like that. All right. So right now, automatically, the uh, hidden files are being shown, but you can also turn that off by right-clicking and unchecking show hidden files. Well, since it was on by default, I'll just turn it back on. And you can see you got your documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, videos, and then all your hidden files and folders. All right, and this is Nemo. All right, it's still installing. So let me see what this other uh, files is. Okay, this looks like the traditional GNOME files. So you can change the layout of it. And then you hit this uh, three dots right here. You can go to the about and it is files, the GNOME project. So that's cool. You have Nemo and files. So you can use whichever one you want. They both basically do the same thing. It's just a matter of how they look. And the other thing we have right here is GeniePad, which should be a text editor. And it is. So you can just type in text, you know, type in code, type in whatever you want to type in. And let's see what version of Genie we're using. It is Genie 2.0. All right, don't save. All right. And it looks like a uh, WPS office has finished installing. So we can go ahead and, uh, okay. It's loading app details. So let's see what happens here. All right, let me open it. See if it opens up. It does. And you have an end user license agreement. Okay, haven't seen one of those in a while, but just confirm. All right, check and complete, close. All right, so from right here, you know, you can open up documents and view all your document files right here. Uh, let's say I wanted to make a new doc. Let's see, allows automatic check where the format has been tampered with. Okay, 
So from right here, you know, you can make a new doc, type if you want to. But of course, I don't need to do none of that. And of course, I can just close it and I don't need to save it. Uh, then you can uh, search your PC and find documents and open them up yourself. And this is WPS Office. Uh, is there an about on here? Let me check. About WPS. Current version 11.1.0.11723. It's a lot of dots, a lot of numbers. All right, so for the most part, it's a it's a lightweight system. It stalls real quick. Uh, it works without any problems. I don't see any issues whatsoever. You know, everything's working, everything's snappy. So, uh, yeah, if it's something you want to take a look at, I will have the link down in the video description. That way you can play with it yourself. Just remember, if you're going to install this on bare metal, I would highly uh, suggest that you do it in a virtual machine first. That way you know what you're getting into. All right, you guys, if you're new to the channel, please uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe. If you like the video you just saw, please hit that like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button. And that's going to do it for this one. And I'm out.